it is nothing short of unfortunate that the diet of the majority of Americans is influenced so greatly by the media. Conventional wisdom, appeal to authority, essentially what we've been told our entire lives. I guarantee you that meat sales have gone down in flavor of plant-based alternatives, but they still need people to eat some meat, otherwise their feedlot operations would go to waste. Over 10 articles yesterday on meat not being bad for you anymore. Really? The general consensus of these articles being that people should continue their current consumption of meat as the health impact of cutting back is non-existent and that it would be misleading to suggest people should avoid meat for health reasons. I'm getting sick of all this back and forth BS and figured this was an excellent opportunity to debunk all of the arguments commonly used against meat consumption. Saturated fat and cholesterol, carcinogens, heme iron, TMAO, mTOR, IGF-1, NU5GC, nitrates, and environmental pollutants. The first and by far most popular argument is that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. I think there are far too many arguments on both sides of this and we can fling epidemiological studies back and forth at each other all day. But the fact that there is evidence on both sides means that we should be looking at mechanisms, metabolic processes in the body as opposed to looking at these studies. The theory is that saturated fat increases cholesterol and that this cholesterol forms plaques in your arteries leading to heart disease. But the sole reason that cholesterol actually gets stuck in your arteries is because of linoleic acid. When you consume vegetable seed oils, any nuts or seeds high in linoleic acid, the fats in your body become the fats you are eating. In this case, linoleic acid is unnatural to our bodies in such high amounts, therefore it is inflammatory and our body attacks it. This cholesterol gets attacked in our arteries, causing blockages, leading to heart attacks and stroke. And this isn't limited to heart disease. Linoleic acid causes damage in many cells and metabolic systems in our bodies. Of course, increasing the amount of this inflammatory linoleic acid-based cholesterol would be detrimental, but if linoleic wasn't present as it shouldn't be, it wouldn't be an issue in the first place. Stop blaming the meat for what the soy and sugar did. Another popular concern is that carcinogens are formed when cooking meat, but these carcinogens aren't specific to meat. You have heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that are formed when creatine and amino acids in meat react with a heating element. But polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are also present in cereal, processed carbohydrates, vegetable seed oils, advanced glycation end products can be formed in our bodies from these carcinogens, but only in the presence of high blood sugar. So the culprit with AGEs is the high carbohydrate consumption of a standard American diet. Acrylamide is another end product that forms when carbohydrates are cooked. French fries, potato crisps, coffee, pastries, breads. The point here is that all of the foods that we eat that are cooked are full of supposed carcinogens, yet humans have been cooking food for thousands and thousands of years in perfect health before we started consuming modern processed foods, vegetable seed oils. Stop blaming the meat for what the soy and sugar did. That's gonna be the mantra here. What about heme iron? Heme iron is a type of iron found specifically in meat, and heme iron can actually oxidize fats in your colon, resulting in a toxic environment, allowing cancerous cells to thrive at the expense of normal cells, increasing cancer risk. This ties back to the linoleic acid discussion we had earlier about heart disease. Omega-6 fats, like linoleic acid, are prone to oxidation, especially because our body cannot utilize the high amounts we are consuming in modern diets. Stop blaming the meat for what the soy did. What's crazy about this is that iron deficiency is one of the biggest problems in the United States. Over 10 million people, yet we are afraid of eating red meat 
because all of these studies are saying, oh, heme iron is bad for you if you chug down half a gallon of soybean oil a week. TMAO is trimethylamine N-oxide, a molecule said to be linked to heart disease. It is produced in your body from certain substances contained in food, such as carnitine in red meat, betaine in grains and vegetables, choline in eggs and vegetable seed oils, such as soybean oil, which we consume much more of than red meat. Betaine nitrate is found in certain vegetables like spinach, lettuce, celery, and beets. TMAO excretion in the urine is much higher when consuming fish compared to beef. And no one is going to say that eating wild caught fish is unhealthy for you, unless they're a brainwashed vegan. That same brainwashed vegan will choke down a bowl of lettuce the size of his torso while telling you that TMAO is bad for you. Egg consumption has not been shown to increase TMAO levels, and TMAO has actually been shown to reduce markers of heart failure, the opposite of what we're being told. mTOR is the mammalian target of rapamycin, the mTOR pathway being a very complicated metabolic pathway whose function is in cell metabolism, growth, proliferation, and survival. The argument here is that consuming protein, certain amino acids, is activating the mTOR pathway, therefore accelerating aging, as well as cancer growth. All studies done on mTOR were in the context of a fat-restricted diet, which puts stress on different metabolic functions, as you are now getting imbalanced amounts of nutrients not reminiscent of a natural diet. A lack of animal fat and animal nutrients will increase appetite, resulting in higher protein and carbohydrate consumption. High protein and high carbohydrate meals spike insulin much more than fat. Your meal frequency will be much higher as well, resulting in blood sugar fluctuations plentiful throughout the day. This study supports my hypothesis. mTOR inhibition is associated with glucose intolerance, insulin resistance, as well as unnaturally high cholesterol levels. We also see testicular degeneration, cataracts, inflammation of the digestive tract, as well as impaired wound healing. It is safe to say that mTOR is a necessary cell process that we are looking at negatively. Would you put weights in your car because your brakes weren't working well? No, you would fix your brakes. But the way we are looking at mTOR is not fixing the root problem. Why are we trying to slow it down as opposed to fixing the possible negative inputs to the aging process? Linoleic acid, sugar, refined junk foods should all be removed from the diet before considering any of these things that are as crazy as taking a drug to inhibit an incredibly important metabolic pathway in the body. IGF-1 is insulin-like growth factor 1. A hormone similar to insulin plays an important role in childhood growth and has anabolic effects in adults. We see that high levels of IGF-1 can promote the growth of certain cancers, but men with low IGF-1 levels had an almost two-fold higher risk of all-cause mortality. This is similar to mTOR, in a sense that we are trying to limit a necessary part of human metabolism because we can't figure out why the metabolic processes associated with that necessary part of metabolism aren't working properly. Consuming milk has been shown to boost IGF-1, and it's probably why the Maasai tribe were one of the physically strongest groups of people. We can also credit the high dairy consumption in the Netherlands for the impressive height of the Dutch. NU5GC is a non-human sialic acid sugar molecule. This molecule is found in most non-human mammals, but human genes mutated thousands of years ago, losing the NU5GC gene and gaining excess NU5AC, which is simply a NU5GC molecule with oxygen added. So we don't produce NU5GC, but can obtain it from eating meat from animals that contain it in their flesh. NU5GC is found in higher levels in tumors. Therefore, it is believed to play a role in cancer. Sialic acids, NU5GC, NU5AC, have structural and modulatory roles in cells. 
They are a crucial component of the cell surface. Humans have specific antibodies to gather new 5GC, but new 5GC does get incorporated into tissue. So our body uses it despite not producing it anymore. So we know that sialic acids are needed in cells for important functions, but when cancer cells have higher levels of sialic acids, we view it as a bad thing. That doesn't make sense. If a cell was under stress, it would probably require more of the certain resources that it normally uses to function. So it's very possible that your body is taking the new 5GC to the point of inflammation and trying to help. There are a lot of pieces missing to this new 5GC puzzle, but it's safe to say that new 5GC being a carcinogen is far from being proven. Some of you may be familiar with nitrates being added to processed meats, causing them to be carcinogenic. Nitrates and nitrites occur naturally in fruits and vegetables, but when added to processed meats, can react with other chemicals and proteins to form nitrosamines the carcinogenic compound that we are worried about. The chemical reaction appears to be limited to dried processed meats, such as cured meats, cooked bacon, non-fat dry milk, certain cheeses. The direct fire drying process used here oxidizes the meats far more than other heating methods. Basically, don't buy cheap meat processed in a giant conventional factory. Naturally smoked meats, even with preservatives added, don't appear to be an issue. There are certainly concerns pertaining to hormones, heavy metals, other pollutants in meat and fish, but more so the food supply in general. If people knew the amount of antibiotics and negative substances in their water, they would probably find a clean river and build a cabin next to it. Whether it's estrogenic herbicides like atrazine in grain-fed beef, toxins in farm-raised fish, or glyphosate in grains, the way we are currently raising food is a concern. The solution being to support local farming, sustainable agriculture, natural ecosystems. And if humans lived as nature intended, I wouldn't be up at 3 a.m. losing my mind making this video. So if you guys could please give me a like, subscribe if you haven't, definitely hit that bell icon. If you guys would like to support me further, please check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We have a local beef box delivered to your door for less than $10 a pound. And by the time I post this, we're probably going to be out of it. Uh, we have grass-fed Wagyu on sale, off cuts. And honestly guys, the Wagyu is the best meat I have ever tasted in my life, bar none, at the hands of Chef Frankie Boy. You guys can also check out frankiesnaturals.com for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products if you want to look like a Roman statue after not having slept for three days. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, before I forget, if you guys want to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one health consultations, you can shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com.